Once there was a young man who grew up in the South alongside his parents and his siblings. It was necessary at that time for he and his siblings to work alongside his parents in the family business of agriculture and carpentry and masonry. But what he didn't realize is these skills that he would develop would serve him later in life, ultimately becoming something that was nice to have for him when he became of age and had to provide for himself and his family. He would utilize these skills for more than 40 years in his career until one daunting and unforeseen day when he couldn't. Hey there, welcome back to the show. I'm Cornell Germain, and I thank you so much for joining me. Listen, if this is your first time here, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you are a returning viewer, I thank you so much for joining me once again. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss a beat. Today, we're talking about something that is nice, but also necessary, creating a brand that people can't live without. So if you're a brand owner or business leader, stay tuned. As we think about this conversation of nice versus necessary, I can't help but go back to a time and period where a particular brand was on and popping. And I mean, everybody in my friend group, my community, in my city had to have this particular brand. It was a time of year where most parents would go out to buy their kids winter coats, right? And if you were anything like me, you wanted something fashionable and ideally you wanted this thing called Pelly Pelly. I remember the Pelly Pelly leather coats and let me tell you, they were a thing in the day. They were just fashionable, stylish. Everybody had them. All the hip hop stars were wearing them. And listen, if you had the means, you wanted one and got one, but I couldn't afford them. And as it stood in my household, it just wasn't happening. So I had to go without, but many kids like myself, and you may know some of yourself, who have these desires and they think it is just a need to have, I must have it, it is so necessary, but really in actuality, it's not at all. But truly speaking, your position in life is really what determines your idealism when it comes to what is nice versus necessary. As we dig more into this topic of what's nice versus necessary, we must look at the definitions of these things because something that is nice is typically deemed as something that you like or something that would be great to have. But something that is necessary is typically deemed as something that you gotta have or you can't live without. As we look at the opening story of the young man who grew up alongside his parents, we have a grandfather where it was necessary for his kids to work alongside him in order to supply for the family. But then we have his son who would later go on in life taking those same skill sets that would become a nice to have for him and his family. It means that this grandfather had no other options. If his children didn't help him in supplying for the family, they would have went without. But the son who grew up to have his own children now had other options. So what his father deemed as necessary for him became nice to have and did the job fulfilling what he needed. I think we all understand what is nice, right? But I wanna dig into this conversation of what is necessary. Ultimately, when we look at something that is necessary, we're talking about a need. And if we're gonna talk about this, we have to look at the research done by Abraham Harold Maslow, who was an American psychologist who studied or developed a hierarchy of needs to explain human motivation. His research states that there are five levels of hierarchy when it comes to our human needs. To put this within context, I ultimately came to this conclusion after looking at this study and then just looking at our Western culture, particularly here in America, where most times what we deem necessary is really nice to have. You know, like that Louis Vuitton, it's not really necessary, it's just nice to have. Maybe not. Let's look a little closer at this particular study. Human needs arrange themselves in hierarchies of prepotency. This is to say, the appearance of one need usually rests on the prior satisfaction of another more prepotent need. What he concluded is that man is a perpetually wanting animal. He also concluded that no need or drive can be treated as if it were isolated or discrete. He said every drive is related to the state of satisfaction or dissatisfaction of another drive. What he's simply stating here is he's saying that once a core need at a given level has been satisfied, the next level in that hierarchy will emerge more strongly and become a driving force 
behind human behaviors and thoughts. Maslow's theory highlighted the idea that a fulfilled need is no longer an active motivator. He said that once a person has satisfied the requirement of a need, they will seek to meet a more higher need. It means that our urgency for need is subject to our position in life. This means that what is nice to have for one person may be absolutely necessary for another. What it also means is that energy behind our needs flows, it is constantly moving. This is something that a particular company in my area understood and many other companies like Google and others that their employee had needs outside of just doing their job and making money. And what they said is, well, let's fulfill the foundational needs for these employees. That way, the energy that they have or would have put into trying to figure out these other things in their life can now be put into doing their job and doing it effectively. What am I talking about? I'm talking about a business that had all kind of free food offerings for their employees. And when I say free, I mean anything that you can think of absolutely for free. This was a motivator for this particular company because they understood one simple thing as it pertains to the hierarchy of needs. They understood that if we could meet the fundamental needs of these people and release them from the stress of trying to figure them out, now they can focus better on their job. I get it. And I wish I worked for them because I understand what it means to have to get up and try to figure out what you're going to have for breakfast and get up and try to figure out what you're going to take for lunch and then having somewhere to store the lunch and then having somewhere to warm the lunch, and then finding somewhere to sit to have all those things that come just with trying to find something to eat while you're at work. I get it. I know what they're talking about. If I worked for this particular establishment, I would have been in love, right? They understood the hierarchy of needs and they understood that this energy flows, that if we can meet the need in this area, now that energy can be focused in another area. This is what happens with us as humans, whether we realize it or not. That rich auntie that just has to have the latest Mercedes Benz, yeah, you look at her and you figure, oh, she's so shallow and she's so this, she's so that. No, she's rich. She has a level of wealth that affords her the ability to have the urgency or the necessity for the latest bins. But her niece or whomever it may be who doesn't have that level of wealth, they're just trying to figure out how to make a coin so that they could buy a pair of sneakers or their first car or what have you. This energy flows. It's telling us that our customers are approaching our products and services from various levels of need. And if the need that we're trying to meet is not a necessity where the prepotent need has been fulfilled, then ultimately that brand or business probably won't be something that particular customer can live without. So it's really a question of understanding the customer and where they are in their hierarchy of need. And if you understand that customer, where they are, where that urgency is, now you can meet them right there. And ultimately, guess what? Whatever you got, they want because they can't live without it. Now, he determined that there are five specific areas of human need, and the foundational one is that of physiological needs. That is food, oxygen, shelter, water, the things that any of us need no matter where we're from or who we are. These are things that are fundamental, but once those fundamental things have been met, the urgency for the next level of need is just as great. So that means that a woman who is hungry, has no food, has nowhere to find food, her hunger for food is gonna be great. A desire for a Louis Vuitton bag, for a Mercedes Benz will be non-existent. However, an individual who has plenty of bread, cupboards who are overflowing, will now have a need at the next level. And let's say that next level is fulfilled. The next need will be the next level. Ultimately, the more needs that you have that are fulfilled, the greater your desire for certain things. Now, what does this mean for the business leader or brand owner? It means that the customer that you are creating a product or service for has a need. The thing that you have to identify is what that need is and how crucial it is based on the prepotency of the first need. So if you're creating a product for someone that will help them to better navigate technology 
If they don't even have food to eat, their desire to learn another product or develop another skill set within the technological sphere is non-existent. They don't care about it. All they're thinking about is getting food. But if you have a person who has shelter, maybe they're lacking in food at the moment, but they have a skill set to make money to get the food. Now their need for this technological advancement or product or platform will be great. Understanding the customer that you're serving and where they are on the hierarchy scale will help you better serve them. Here's something that I want you to understand as it pertains to the hierarchy of need. A deficient need ultimately creates a problem, but a problem, if you're a smart entrepreneur, will produce a product. And that product should provide a solution. And from that solution comes success. What am I saying? Remembering the need is not based on what you deem needful, it's what the customer deems necessary. The greater the need that you supply, the more significant the success. As we look at this hierarchy of need, I can't help but to reflect back to our opening story, where we talk about a young man who grew up in the South alongside his parents and siblings, learning a trade, not necessarily because he wanted to, but because he had to, because it was necessary in order to help his parents apply for the family. We later see these skill sets turn into a livelihood where he now could provide for himself and his family. This particular man just so happens to be my father. My dad always loved for his kids to gather with him, you know, whether it was in the kitchen cooking or eating or just sitting around and talking junk. He just loved for us to come around and be in the vicinity, right? It was just always nice, but there came a time where it became necessary. That's because he had a freak accident that left him as a quadriplegic. This meant that now what was nice was absolutely necessary. Yeah, at one time it was nice for all of us to show up and be around at the house and dot in and out and cook some food together and eat. But when that change of life happened for him, it became something that was necessary. Not only necessary for us to see him because he didn't physically have the means to get up and come to us, but necessary because our presence was something that filled that gap and ultimately gave him the will to fight through that period of his life. As entrepreneurs, brand owners, and business leaders, we must identify our customers and their level of need. Ultimately, distinguishing between our products and services, the complementary versus the critical. When it comes to your customers, is your product a nice to have or a can't live without? Think about it. Well, that's our show today. Listen, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell, and I'll see you back here same time, same place next week. Take care.